buy an insurance product. And, you know, he's trying to figure out, did he move toward a goal or away from? So he'd talk, first he would, he was a toward guy, so he'd throw out about, you know, if you invest in this insurance product, it's, it'll build a retirement annuity, it'll do this. And he was looking to see if these people would take action, right? And if it connected with them, they would, they would get excited. Yeah, if I invest this money, eventually this will come back. This, but that doesn't work for everybody. Some people, he needed a negative. So what he would do is he'd ask them to, to bring out a pair of shoes, uh, especially for the, it used to be guys, now it'd be both, but bring a pair of shoes out and he'd put the shoes on the table and then look at the guy, let's say some sort of guy, so who's going to fill these if you're gone? Right? Who's going who's to fill your shoes? Who's going to provide for your family if you're not there? Right? And if that connected with people, then he got them and he talked about, you know, you want to build for your children's you know, if you're not, if, heaven forbid something happened, there's money for their education, for the, does that make sense to everybody? In fact, he got really slick, he would do both. He'd talk about the annuity for retirement, put on, put the shoes up there, and that way he got, no matter what, he's gonna, he knew he was gonna be able to motivate you. Because he, one of those will, will connect with you at the emotional level. Here's one for the business people that we, we're always dealing with. Are you a big picture person? When you're getting an idea, when someone's talking to you, do you just want the overview? Do you want the highlights? Give me the, just give me the, you know, let's, quick. How many people do that? Right, just the overview. How many want highlights? The, the big picture. Just give me the big picture, right? A lot of us are like that, right? Big picture. They're, they're good at um, plan, you know, making big plans, laying out the strategic plan for the organization. Entrepreneurs are usually big picture type of people because they're, you know, this, they're making this big plan. How many people here are specific oriented? They want the details, right? They want all the little details, right? I know in my case, I'm a big picture guy, right? And I remember one day I was going to make a new product, and here's how I decided to do it. I wrote the ad, right? I wrote the ad for the product and tweaked it and, and laid out what was going to be in this product. And then got it ready, and because I'm a big picture guy. And put it in my e-zine, my electronic e-zine that went out to the people. And my wife, who basically runs the, 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 the office, she's a computer programmer by training. Now, computer programmers are detail-oriented people. They have to be, because where the dot goes is very important. I'm not a dot guy. If the program doesn't work, I slap the machine. My wife will break it. And she, it makes her very good at what she does. She's very detail-oriented, right? And now, so she's very, like, she has a structure of how things should go. And I'll tell you in a moment. So anyway, but for some reason, this got in the easy and went out. So a couple of people call up, hey, I want his new product. I don't remember what it was. Let's say it was sports performance. I want his new sports course. And, you know, my wife answers the phone. She goes, okay, uh, takes the info. So now we got two, three orders. And then she comes in. She goes, uh, uh, what is this new sports course? I said, well, I wanted to see if people would buy it. And she goes, you can't do that. First, you have to write the course. Then you have to practice it. Then you have to put it together and film it. And then, you know, test it a little bit and then send it out. Now, that's a detail-oriented approach, right? But I'm like, well, I don't want to do all that if nobody's going to buy it. Does this make sense to anybody? So I kind of tested it. People were going to buy it. Then I wrote the product. Then we, then we put it together, and it went quite well. But that's the, that's the clash that can happen between a big picture person and a detail person. But especially in organizations, you need both. Because if you only have big picture people, you'll have wonderful ideas. Nothing will ever get done because you don't have the people that will follow through and do this. You know? and, uh, and hopefully, your accountant is a detail-oriented person, you know, especially if he has to deal with your taxes. As a guy who's always fighting the IRS in my country, I tell you, I like the... That's the one I like my accountant to ask me questions. Well, what is this? And why does he do this? And what about this? You know, because that, that makes them good at what they do, but not necessarily. So when you're motivating your, your, your employees, do you know which one they are? Because again, if you're, if you're talking to a detail-oriented person and you just give them the grand scheme, well, this is where we're going to take the company and this is, this is going to happen and then this will happen and you'll get your stock options and da-da-da-da-da. And they're sitting there going, but how? And they won't believe you. And they'll leave for someone that will give them details. Because I do know one of the problems here in Malaysia from coming here for several years 
is the brain drain, correct? Your best and brightest go other places. And in a company, you get somebody, you train them, you know, and you want to keep them. Well, people will stay where they're much more comfortable, you know? And so this is one way. Do you move toward or away from? Are people internally motivated or externally motivated? Which one are you? You know, do you do a good job because it's just a good job? It makes you feel you don't need any pats on the back. You don't need anybody to tell you as long as you, you know, you do it because you feel good. Or do you want outside uh, feedback, pats on the back, awards, things like this, right? Which one motivates you more? Which one gets you to take action, right? Now, everyone likes to think they're internally motivated, but are you? I don't know. Most of us go through a period in our lives where you're very externally motivated, and that's adolescent. Anybody here got teenagers? Nobody? A few? Or anybody here ever had teenagers? Right? Is it hard to get them to do something that everyone else is not doing? Right? External focus is more important uh, because they're externally motivated. They want, they're going to do things for what other people will say or do. I was getting gas a few weeks ago, here's an example, and I'm driving my little Jeep, you know, and I'm filling my tank up, and this lady pulls up in a big Cadillac uh, Escalade, if anybody ever seen that. They're huge, they're a boat, man. It was pretty, it was this white color, it's like a pearl, I love it, right? In fact, I'm probably gonna buy one, I don't care. But it's beautiful. So I'm filling my tank, well gas, this was when gas was real high last summer. I'm filling my tank, and she's a little old lady, she's, you know, I live in Florida, like land of the blue hairs, as I call it, and she's putting gas in her tank. Of course, we start the conversation about how expensive it is, you know? I'm like, yeah, you know, and because my other truck is a big uh, uh, pickup truck, so I know. So we're putting gas in there, and uh, she goes, oh, it must be nice to have a little car. I said, well, yeah, it gets good gas mileage. And, but I said, what's interesting, because this is what I do. I go, what motivated you to buy this beautiful Escalade? It's a big truck, and she says, well, probably in her mid-60s, you know, the blue hair and everything. And she goes, oh, well, you know. I said, what, do you like, uh, you got a big family? It was kind of a silly question. She goes, no, no, no. I said, oh, do you like hunt or fish or camp? Which was a silly question. You could tell from her fingernails that the closest she would come to, to uh, camping is a three-star hotel, right, with a diamond Rolex and everything. She goes, no, no, no. In fact, you know, I go, do you, got, do you pull a boat or got horses or something, you know? She goes, no, no, we camp our boat in the marina, you know? I'm like, okay. Uh, so I go down the list. Finally, I said, well, just what, may, what was the motive? Why'd you buy such a big car? If it's just, and she said it was just her and her husband. You know, and these cars seat like nine, right? And she goes, well, in my subdivision, everyone was either buying this or the Mercedes truck, and I just couldn't drive a foreign car. Right? So there's a lady that's very externally motivated. It, she was worried about what the other people would say. This is what product placement's all about, right? You know, is a Rolex really a hundred times better than a Timex? Some would argue yes. Is the result any different? Is 10 o'clock on a Rolex 10 o'clock on a Timex? <laughs> it's the, it's, you know, but some people, they, it's the prestige, you know? It could be anything. You know, last night we went to dinner uh, we were talking because we saw all these sports cars as we were leaving, and a Ferrari, and I know someone here has a Ferrari, I think they're beautiful, but I, I'm like, where can you drive that thing? Because you still have your, do you still have your Ferrari? Yeah, you know, it's like, where do you, you know, it's like, yeah, it'll go from zero to 120 in 3.2 seconds, yeah, and the police can go from zero to 120 in 1.2 seconds because they have radios, you know. <laughs> But I mean, you know, it's like, wow. But it's, you know, maybe you bought it for external things and maybe for internal. Sometimes you'll buy a high prestige product because it just makes me feel good. Maybe it's the, you know, in fact, Rolex is good at that. You know, that's their marketing thing. It's like, it's how I look, how I feel when I look at that watch, right? Or whatever it happens to be. So you internally motivated or externally motivated. So when you're talking to someone you want to motivate or influence, which one is going to get their attention? Right? And so you can begin to customize how you're going to do things. Right? Lastly, is another one is matching or mismatching. So when you look at a situation, do you match or do you look for, for mismatches? So a good example would be um, take, out, take out a uh, 50. Do you have a $50 bill? 
I want to pick on somebody I know. How are you doing? All right, good. So here's 250s, right? 250s, they're same, you know, same thing. When you look at these, you know what? Give me, do you have 100? I'll make it better. Now, when you look at these two, let me ask you a question. When you look at these two, what's the first thing you notice? Number. The number. Yeah. So they're both numbers. What's the next thing you notice? The color. The color. What do you notice about the color? So then you notice a difference. So first you notice that they're similar. The second thing you noticed was the color. What else do you notice? So, okay, so well, we go down the list. Some people will look for how things are similar. Some people will look for how things are different. Hey, thanks, you just, made, you just had a $100 list. I should keep it. Um, so some people will search by what's, what's the same. Other people will look for what's different. Now, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's just how are people sorting information, right? So when you're talking to somebody, you want to begin to find out, you know, do they look for what's similar? So if you're laying out a project, here's how it would work in the business world. Do they look at it like, well, this is kind of like what we did here, so we can go along this path and it'll work, or do they point out all the reasons it'll go wrong, right? Which one do they do? So you can preempt. So if you have that employee that you know is going to mismatch, as they say, and you're pitching the idea and you go, and I know you might be asking yourself, what could go wrong with this idea? Well, let me tell you. And then basically preempt it, a la, this is what Reagan did with the, with the age thing. You know, he took it off the table. Another one is when you're, and this is really good for salespeople, and we're all salespeople at one point or another. In fact, I think everything is sales, if you want my personal opinion. Do you need to see something once or several times for you to be convinced? Right? When someone gives you a proposal, gives you an idea, do you see it once and you go, okay, I might, I might do that. that. That'll work. That'll be good for me. Or do you want to see it over and over again? How many times does it take you to be convinced that something works? You know, most people, it's either once or twice or it's several times. Right? It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. But you be, if you begin to figure out which, which one your employee is, you know, if once is fine, you lay out a big picture person will lay out the idea, this, this, and this. This is how we're going to do it. Here's how this other company did it. There's your external evidence, right? So now we can do it. Okay, if, the, if that person is a big picture person and will believe things in a quick thing, they'll go, okay, we can do that. Now someone else will go, okay, here's our idea. You know, this is how we're going to do it. This is how, you know, it worked in this company. This is how it worked in that company. Here's another example of a company that did it, and now we can do it. You know, it's like sales people, when you're, when you're making a sales call, um, you, can, you can use this because, you know, if someone makes a decision quickly, they'll do it. But if they need a lot of repetition, you can actually speed up the process subconsciously. So if you have someone that needs several times and you give them a sales proposal, and you say, as you're looking at this, I know you may think you need a lot more evidence, but if you could just imagine all the testimonials I could send you right now, if you could just imagine them, you'll see that this is the right idea. And it sounds very trite, but this will work because the person will go in their head and they'll imagine several times. It's just a, it's just a subconscious uh, motivational tool, right? So you want to begin to, to, to track the information so you can communicate with your employees. So what are your top people that you deal with? Are they big picture people or are they specific? Which ones are which? And then I guarantee you the ones you communicate the least effectively with are the ones that are opposite from you. So I'm a big picture person, like I said. Oh my God, the, the discussions me and my sweet significant other have you know, over this kind of thing, you know? In fact, I, I'm convinced you know, going on the road saved my marriage. But, um, you know, so it's like, you know, I, but now when I'm prepared for it and I go in with, with okay, this is what we need to do, da 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 like now I'm kind of changing my business. I'm doing more business-oriented stuff, not therapeutic, things like that. So I went in and we're having this talk. I said, okay, here's how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to, you know, begin to wind this one down, to ramp this one up. And she was happy. Okay, fine, no problem. You know, my typical thing would be go, no, nah, we're going to start doing that. See ya. You know, and she would like, ah, you know. 
And so whichever one, you know, 